No, that's called size. Last time I checked, Key's pretty tall. You just stand there and you alter shots. And I think that we knew that coming in. Uh, Angel releases the ball from here, so we knew that um, she would be guarding Angel. She's not going to go outside and guard Morrow, who we bring away from the basket more. So I think it was just her size altering shots. Now, we did miss a lot of layups. We missed a lot of layups, but I would always give credit to the to the defense. Um, so I, I, I think size um, had a lot to do with um, Angel missing shots. Uh, if you look at Morrow, she was four for 14. Flage, who is just a warrior for playing today, she was three for, what is that, 11? Flage sick. Um, so we told them going in, the game will be won by the team that wins the boards. And I thought we battled so hard against their size on the boards. And they have size on the perimeter as well. What, what did Haley's shot making overall, what did that mean to y'all and how, how important was it in order to get the win? Well, Haley's taken a lot of criticism and it needs to stop. It needs to stop. She's learned a new position. She's on a top team in the country, the defending national champion. She's having to play the point guard. Then today she moved to the off guard. She had zero, and you write that big, zero turnovers in almost 37 minutes of play. That's the most important stat in my eyes. I know she scored 26. She had three assists. Uh, she hit big shots in the game when we needed a shot the most. Uh, then she made sure she handled the ball in the last couple of minutes to where, um, you know, we used up some of the clock. What, what do you think the game today meant to her, given the criticism that she has faced, like you said? It's probably not going to affect her one way or the other. She's a baller. You know, she, she knows the only people that matter to her are the ones that coach her and the ones that love her. Any more in here? Right here? Yeah, Kim, is, is that pretty much how you'll continue to play, you think, with your part guards? You'll play Poe there some and you'll play Yeah, we've Fendley. done it, yes. You'll just keep doing that and you feel like on down the stretch? Yes. And, and just one other thing, on your team's conditioning, you don't play that many people but you don't seem to tire out in the fourth quarter. I play to win. If I've got nine deep, I'll play nine deep. But you got to remember, I lost my starting five player earlier in the year, Samaya Smith. So we're one down there. Kateri Poole, who was a starter for us in the championship run we made, is no longer on the team. So that takes away two more. So really, I go about seven deep, maybe eight sometimes. I, I'm not a coach that believes you play the happy game. You know what that is? You got to give all of them minutes. The happy game gets your butt beat by teams you shouldn't lose to. You play to win. And I, I learned that from Pat Summit. I learned that from Leon Barmore. I learned that from a lot of great coaches. And we play to win. And if I have that many people on a team that get double figures, the chances are they're not all going to be happy anyway. Coach, in that fourth quarter, it seemed to touch and two. Was it the fourth or the third? I can't remember. It seemed like it was early in the third. Okay, go ahead. And then you saw a timeout, and Coach Houston took the stop, had the chance to, to tie it. And then I think they took an awkward shot inside, and then it just seemed to spiral downhill for Houston. What was going to be the key defensively there? Make defensive stops. Give them one shot, keep rebounding the ball, and we're, we need to get better production on the offensive end. We need to execute. In the third, we lost our composure a little bit, but Tennessee made us lose our composure. So I don't want to take anything away from what they did. When you're down, you play just a little bit harder and a little bit more aggressive, and you try to disrupt things. And I felt they did that in the third quarter. They went to some zone, and we didn't get the ball in the right hands of people that needed to touch it. Um, and then we got on a run there, you know, in the fourth quarter where we got some transition buckets, some free throws. Uh, Haley hit some shots. Um, it wasn't anything magical that I told them. It's just keep grinding.
keep grinding. Good things are going to happen for you if you play defense and rebound the ball. We've got time for one more in here, and then we'll move to Zoom to finish it off there. It felt like when it this game Tell got me who you are. Cora Hall, Knox News Center. Oh, Cora, and finally nice to meet you. Nice to meet AP you uh, voter, right? Yes. Um, it felt like this, when this game got close in the end, it felt like it came down to guard play. You know, obviously Haley was scoring, but just her decision making too. Just from your point of view, how do you feel like the guard play down the stretch you know, changed this game? You're very observant. I thought both posts for each team kind of offset each other. They were all both two for them, two for up, just battling. Just bumping, hitting, pushing, shoving, trying to make one more shot. So it really did come down to guard play. I thought Michaela Williams, who, by the way, is the best freshman in this league, she finally hit some big shots for us. She played more aggressive. She got in foul trouble. I put her in with three fouls, and she was able to play through it. I thought Haley making shots was very big for us. Yes, I think um, Darby went in for them, and uh, she took us off the dribble one time. Then she hit a big three, so she gave them a spark. Um, but maybe Haley, just what she did was a little bit better than what they did on the perimeter. All right, on Zoom, Morgan or Ethan will unmute you if you have a question. I think it starts with um, leadership in a huddle. I think it starts with calmness by the coaches. Now, I want energetic coaches. I never wanted to play for a passive coach. Pump me up. So I think coaches do a really good job of making them get that sourpuss look off your face. Everybody's going to make a run. We're on the road. Flage, we didn't even know she was going to play. We got 45 minutes. There's so many things I could tell you. We just played three games in seven days. I could give you at least six reasons that we could have lost that game today. But you don't even go there. You just tell them we still have the lead, people. At the end of the third quarter, we were up three. Let's go ball. This is what you want. This will make us better. Um, what won the game for you was not your ability to score, nor was it their ability to score. It was your defense in critical moments, and it was your rebounding, not allowing them to get second and third shots. Um, she did not practice. She got on the plane yesterday morning. We left at 8. And she just, she was sick. And I don't even know what her symptoms are. See, this is what they do to coaches. They don't want you to know for fear that you're not going to play them. So she communicated through a trainer. And I have to trust the trainer to take care of her and to make the right decision if she plays or not. And so uh, she did not practice yesterday. And this morning we didn't have a shoot around, so at breakfast she was in. Bre she was at breakfast, and I looked at her and the trainer said, "Are you? Can you go or not?" And of course she felt great. So you know how those greats are when you're a baller. You don't want a coach to know you really don't feel good. Do one more here on Zoom. I thought it was so much better than in some of the games that um, that we lost. Uh, in some of the games that we lost, I didn't think our perimeter defense was solid. And I thought today, while we lost them some on, on dribble penetration, I, I just thought that um, we didn't let them dribble penetrate too much to break us down defensively. 
Uh, we wanted to make them shoot the three ball, but be close enough and respect them enough that they don't just get a wide open three.